Hey there, and welcome back. Uh, got another assembly video today. Something I've been pretty excited about since I picked it up in the mail. Uh, Zinch Demon's Lord of Change. Uh, model that really kind of follows the, the Age of Sigmar design philosophy that every army needs a centerpiece, a big flashy model you can put in a table that, you know, it kind of gets you excited about the army. Uh, Age of Sigmar does a really good job that, uh, Pretty much every army has one of these, and even stuff like the Sons of Behemoth uh, are entirely composed of them. Uh, never assembled one of these before, so this is going to be kind of a, a blind assembly for me. Uh, gonna gonna follow my own own advice and go through the instructions first. I do know from the unit sheet that we're not going to have a whole lot of options here. Uh, the kit will either make a Lord of Change or Kairos Fate Weaver. You can see him here on the back. He's got two heads instead of one. Cool book staff. We're not going to be assembling him today. Uh, we just want the Lord of Change. He's always going to have this Staff of Zinch. We'll, uh, we'll pick the Staff Head when we get to that. And then this arm here, uh, you can give him the Rod of Sorcery this little sword or you can just leave it open and give him a hand to kind of slap stuff around with so i will say i'm a little concerned that this came in uh a repackaged plastic outer coating uh so we're gonna go ahead and get into that whether this is a choice by the retailer that bought this online not in person uh whether this is a choice by the retailer to improve the durability of the plastic because it's a much thicker coating, or they just wanted to put plastic on the outside in case it got rattled around, that remains to be seen, but we'll check it out. So we'll get our X-Acto knife ready. Just go ahead and cut right into that. Get this thick bit sliced through. We'll go ahead and get that opened up. Don't need that for a little while. And in our video today, we're gonna try something a little different. Uh, we're gonna see in the instructions exactly what it takes for our arms here. Uh, what the difference is, if this is a separate arm, if this is just a separate hand piece that connects to the arm. And we're gonna see if we can't uh, Get a little magnet magic going on so that we have the variety. You know, a model this big that you spend this much money on, uh, it's really not uh, not an option for most people to just buy two or three and then buy another two or three that have the Rod of Sorcery and then another two or three to build with nothing. Better off magnetizing it so you can just kind of swap around especially for a model like the lord of change that has so few options you you compare your lord of change to something like uh a great unclean one or a keeper of secrets that has multiple options for each arm uh it very limited in in comparison but that's okay because the options we do get are really good so let's get this open some nice design up here on the top. And let's see what we've got in our box. This has that same kind of dual box design that the uh, Triumph of St. Catherine came with. That the inside has this really cool. Let's see if I can get that all in the shot there. We've changed up our uh, side cam here a little. just to uh, give us a little more field of view. Uh, the downside to, or the, uh, the trade-off to having to see more of me in the shot is that I'll be able to get the full Lord of Change in, in view here. So, have our instruction booklets go through one through four for our Lord of Change, and then Kairos, like many of these other models, start at step one. Skip through five and six. So before we take a look at our instructions, let's just take a minute to admire 
our sprue sheets here. Get that over there out of the, the side cam view. Some really great detailed pieces here. Uh, things like this book, uh, the arms, the little scars, bits and pieces really pop. And these wings, I would imagine, oh, that's, a, that's an unusual one. These wings, I would imagine, are just phenomenal for kit bashing. Uh, the downside there, that you're not really going to find somebody that wants to build a keeper of, uh, keeper of secrets or a lord of change without using these wings. But they are nice. Get a good picture of those in there, detailed on both sides. Really good stuff. So we have all those, have our base, and this doesn't actually look like it's that many pieces. It's gonna be a very tall model, though, judging by this staff, comparing it to on the front of the book. Pretty tall. set this to the side for a minute. We'll set it right over here on the desk. We're going to go through our instruction booklet and just kind of kind of get a feel for what we're doing here. Same thing we get with all of our other stuff. Uh, tips, everything like that. Dry fit everything before you glue it. Good idea with every part you assemble, really. So our step one, the one that you complete for all variants, sets up the base of the body with the chicken legs and one of the arms. We're completing the Lord of Change. So we're going to go through, we'll add his face, loincloth, his staff has the option of heads here. We have to pick if we want this one that's kind of on fire, or this one that's a little bit larger. Here's really what we're looking for. Uh, gonna go into here. It looks like Staff of Zinch and Rod of Sorcery, or Baleful Sword. Both go into one of two poses. So that'll be helpful for us. Uh, we can pick a pose that's a little easier on the magnet so that the, the lever action doesn't break the magnetic grip too easily. So we check it out over here. The Rod of Sorcery can be built like this. The Baleful Sword can be built like this. It looks like these both just slide into the top of this piece here where his hand sits. into his hand. So let's give this a look. So that's going to go there. And then these two, we have to pick if we want that arm or this arm. And it looks like with enough finagling, because we have 36 and 37 form the arm that sits close to the chest. We can use 35 goes here, glues on, and can hold either piece with 38, but we have 39, 40, and 43 go here, connected to 41 and 42, which means that this will be where we magnetize. We'll have one arm set up with the staff, or the rod of sorcery, and one arm set up with the baleful sword. That works out really well in our favor. A lot of times they, uh, will reuse pieces and you end up with a part closer to this where your magnetization location is this one tiny piece. Here we're going to be able to use the entire arm. That gives us plenty of surface area. We can get a couple magnets in there that let us switch between the two. The staff doesn't change. The model's always going to have that, so that'll glue right on. And we'll just check out the next couple pages from here. Oh, if you want him to have just the staff, you can have him holding it kind of, ha. Huh. Then the head gets attached, arms onto the wings. 
A lot of detail here on the head, a lot of options for how you want it to look. The wings attach, pay attention to this, keep the angle. So that'll be a lot of dry fitting that we end up doing. Then you finish them up with a bunch of neat little stuff, some scrolls, a dagger, the shoulder pad, a couple brimstone horrors for the base. Not too bad. Not too bad at all, and I'm really happy that we're going to be able to get in there and magnetize that arm like that. So we'll do that when we get to it. Uh, the quick and dirty with magnets is you're going to want to use super glue instead of plastic glue. Not that plastic glue doesn't work, it just doesn't have the staying power that super glue does. Uh, and you, you end up with a situation where the the pull of the magnets especially when you're using you're going to want to use like you're going to want to use these rare earth magnets uh unless you really get in there drill the hole out and cover the magnet back up with plastic once it's in there and get it primed it, it takes a lot more work than just using super glue which is going to bond it directly to the plastic instead of melting to the plastic and giving it that plastic foam grip uh I've I've had more success using super glue to bind these magnets than I have with plastic glue, just just because of the the action of how it works. But we'll do that when we get to it. So for now, let's get started on our pieces. We're gonna move our base off to the side here, and we just need to find our piece that starts with one, which I believe is the other set sprue so we get back to it get our trusty sprue clips handy and let's get numbers 11 12 Oh, here I thought I was going to be able to do it nice and fluid. It's around here somewhere. What even am I looking for? The other half of this. We have 11, we have 13, I just need to find 12. Here we go. There's 12. Didn't recognize it from that angle. And 13 will be this gentleman here. I say gentleman. This uh, small lump of plastic. Ah, oh, there we go. We're just gonna keep going. 10. Where are you, 10? Here we go. Gonna be the uh, front, I assume. Right out, get that up there. Appears to be the massive pectoral muscles for our bird. So we're gonna get started here. Number one, first in the sprue, is this enormous leg. Four and five, these are going to be little talons. Two. 
two and three. Three is our piece here. Some more of these feathers. Really contribute a bunch to the design of the model. Number two, tiny claw. Let's see if we can find this before I run out of hard drive space for the video. Hmm. We are just looking for a tiny piece. Do, 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 do. Got one here, we have three here. Four is down here. 54 is that piece. Let's flip it over, see if we can find this. Real small foot claw. That's nine. Well, when in doubt, we check the other sprue. Because maybe it's on there. Never be too certain. Yep. Number two. Obviously on a different sprue from the rest of them. Because why wouldn't it be? And then let's set that back down. And just see if we can continue here. So number six. Pretty easy to pick out. It's another giant leg. Number seven, right next to it. Number eight, looks like another one of those big clawed feet. See a clawed foot here that's number nine. This is not what we're after though. To the other sprue. While well, I'm thinking about it. Get a little music playing in the background. Head number two. Let's see if we have number eight. We do right here. Set that back down. Number 18. Let's see if we can get that popped out real quick. Here we go. This piece here. Number 14, this cool little cloth bit. kind of nice. The inside has a uh, textured look to it, as does the outside. I think the inside is going to sit up against the chest and make it look like there's feathers brush brushing up against it. So let's get 16 and 17.
17 is an arm. we do have right here seventeen the arm these look like the wing bits so not here so let's go check our second sprue lo and behold we found it There we go. Got all the bits together. So let's get all the music on. Get to cleaning. Get our X-Acto knife out. We're just gonna clean the plastic edges up a little. Make sure we get some nice, good, even seats. You gotta be careful with these feathers. They feel a little, I don't wanna say flimsy, but they're not quite as durable as the rest of these pieces. Got our tiny dew claw here, we gotta be careful with. Drop a piece here. Oh, did I forget one? Pick that up in just a second. Okay. 
Lost it under the enormous chicken leg. Go ahead and find number nine in there. Pretty sure that was the claw we keep seeing that I wasn't sure about the need for. There we go. together nice flat surface there it's either gonna glue really good or be a nightmare I don't think I've had flat surfaces ever just be okay there we go we cleaned up for this page so let's get our glue out. <laughs> Set it all plastic glue got stuck. Been a few days since I used it. We'll pick all that out, put it in our trash cup. Slide that back in. It gets it going. Let's uh, let's dry fit these together real quick. And make sure we know what we're doing. Ooh, got some nice little. You can see this little tab here on the side that interlocks into the directly into the back. It fits together beautifully. So we'll take that, get our glue squeezed out. I hope we have the same thing going on here. Yep. Another tab runs over, clicks in. The belt fits together right across the bottom there. So we got the same thing. We're going to put some glue here on the belt. And then we're going to put some glue in this nice little channel it's given us. That forms, I assume, the the back of our guy. And then we're gonna put the dry fitting here is important. This piece wants me to go in on two sides at the same time.
make sure that we're glued in right here. Peel that back just a little. You can see right here, this front bit is where it's giving me some trouble because it doesn't want to fuse all the way up against it here. That's okay. Glue's still wet. We can just continue to warp it. Top bit there is okay. wants to go in there. You trying to go under. Three pieces in and I'm already struggling. Let's see if this is supposed to be. No, nope, that's supposed to connect right up. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's see now. There we go. So the dry fitting's done. It clicks in underneath it. I just bent that piece. Oops. So we'll get some glue. Run a little along the edges. Like we do. Wipe the excess glue off of our hands so we don't damage the model. Just go ahead and squeeze that in there. We'll just take the that bit off. We're in there now. Nice and seamless. So now we need to take this bit, attach. Oh, this must be a little tongue. Let's line it up with the directions the pictures give us. So the talon goes up, fits in like this. Oh, what a frustratingly tiny little part. I think I get the gist of it. Let's just get our little bit of glue in there. Line the talon up. Smash that in. What a nightmare of a part. That little tongue. goes up against the thigh. I guess his thigh also has a screaming chicken face. Those will go there, line up just like that. Nice and easy. the 
slightest bit of glue. That foot's going together. Number four here goes on the left side. This is another nice little, you can see the little peg hole. A little peg on the on the foot for us. So for our dry fit, goes right in, forms a flat bottom. Should be the same thing with the other side here. Yep, fits together nicely. We want to make sure to get a little bit of glue right back here. Where the rest of the foot connects. This chicken head we don't need to worry about. Because it does not have a tongue. So let's get a little dab here, a little dab there. And it looks like we'll have the same thing with the feet. A little extra space here for some glue. Definitely helps to just make the model a little sturdier. That we're not just connecting the foot with this little peg. We are also connecting it with a little bit of a surface area. Helps reinforce that uh, that chicken leg. We'll get the pieces together. Let's go ahead and get this arm glued together so that it's sturdying up. So according to this, our piece sits like that. Let's see if I can. And that needs to go on here. Whoa. Oh, goody. That is actually super helpful. A tiny bar. Tiny hole for tiny bar. there to dry. Let's start getting our feet together. So this is our right foot. It's going to go up here. Oh, that is pretty nice. So we have the leg goes in and there is visible here, a little tab spot. And then let's see if we can get it on the camera inside of the torso there are tabs so we'll be able to take our guy run that in there form the right seal and get the leg in just like that so we're going to use a maybe a little more glue than we normally would just to make sure We really get that. Oh. Really get that leg in there. There we go, right there. Perfect. I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. Shape enough to be quite a tall gentleman already. Check out this side. Oh, good. Another peg, tiny hole. 
The leg you can see has a tiny peg on the inside of it there. So that we can just line this up, get it right in there. Yeah, so let's get a little glue on the peg. A little glue on this outside surface that we know we're going to use. Go ahead and get that going too. Oh no, that's okay. We'll get that leg back up there. Perfect. Already stands on its own and everything. Which is convenient because it wants us to add the base. So let's start with our headpiece, this little collar, whatever this is, goes on just like that, fits in neatly, there's a tiny peg, stick straight up. Let's lay him to rest for a minute. Get a little bit where our peg goes. Get that on there, make sure I don't ruin it with too much glue. Little crotch plate here has this piece. Goes up and attaches to what appears to be the belt buckles. It leaves a space in the front. So we'll go ahead and get those done. That'll go on there. Okay, leave some feathers on the back. And our arm connects. right in here. Let's see if I can figure out this is why dry fitting is such an important step for me. There we go that goes right there. Pops right in. Go. Pieces are there, and while we're here, we'll just go ahead and add them to the the base. A few little dabs on the bottom. I'm gonna try and give them enough room that the staff can sit down here. Looking pretty good, I think. Off to a good start. So let's set that here on our board. Done with our glue for the minute. Let me just take a second to empty out. Do a very poor job of emptying out all the plastic snips.
Now, let's start on page two. We just need to remember to work on both our assemblies here, but we'll get to that page in a minute. Got a couple of just real fine details here to finish up. So let's get 54 and 15. Looks like a real small detail piece. Here it is. Build our staff. So let's go ahead and get number 34, which I believe is over here. So a piece we showcase the size with. Oh no, 31. That's their one. Then we pick between 34 and 32. 32 is right here, 34 is right here. You know, I think honestly, I'm gonna have to go with the, the 32. out 32 needs 33 to finish it up and that's really all we got for that page let's go ahead and get set our Lord of change over here let's go ahead and assemble both of these and give each one Let's go ahead and put the sword on the arm that's outreached, and we'll put the the staff on, or the rod on the inward arm. So 37 and 36. 36 we have right here. And we'll just go through this to make sure we have enough parts to be able to do what we want to do here. 37. I don't see it here, so it's probably on our other one. Here we go. Whoa. Very tiny uh, contact for the plastic there. Then we need 35. I think we need to switch again. And here we go. That'll be what comes over and grasps it. The one that's close, we decided we wanted the Broad of Sorcery. So 38 is our handle. And 40 is our rod of sorcery.
go ahead and get the other bit. If we can find it. 43. And I think the sword is even on the other sprue. Let's see here. 43. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Right here. And then we're doing the sword with this one, so we'll find the sword, number 39. Cool Zinch sword. And then we need the arm bits. It's 42, I spotted already. Forty-one, which I believe is on this sprue. But I believed wrong. So let's keep at it. Forty-one. So there we go. So when we get to that, we should be able to build our sub-assemblies, and then we'll check out what we've got here arm-wise for magnetizing these pieces. So let's go ahead and trim down our bits. How appropriate, blue flame. That nice and flat we really want this to hold together well because it's going to face an abnormally large amount of stress on that joint due to the magnetization and just being pulled off and on
go. Bits are cleaned up. Let's go ahead and get these few little pieces on. We have a little, uh, I assume, tiara. It's going to fit right there. So let's get some glue on there. Whoa. That's the last thing we want is it sticking to our finger like that. Going on a joyride and getting glue everywhere. Ah. That's going to look gnarly. That's okay, though. It happens. Can't beat ourselves up over it. Get a little bit for the pin on the inside of our... Got a little pin on the inside there. It's going to fit right onto the waist. Just like that. Get our staff change together. So let's see. That goes in just like you expect it would. So we'll get just the tiniest little bit of glue on. So that's good to go there. Turn our staff around so that we sit where we're supposed to. And that it's just uh that shows up a lot on on staves where the two pieces come together nice and easy what a nice stave we'll go ahead and get these sub assemblies together so we have our arm and then we have this guy here is going to go up on top of it. Triangle bit comes in. We have a peg, but how does it fit? Just like that, I hope. That seems right. Let's just get a little glue on there. Run it up that side piece. Let's go ahead and get it on the other side here. Since our diagram is showing us that it connects across both. There we go. Nice and smooth. We have the other side of the arm. Oh, we probably need to get the uh, get the rest of it together. I'm not gonna dry fit this one because we've seen this design already with the staff. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and put this guy together. We got the same thing going on with this piece. Fits right in. Get our sub assemblies glue in. Gotta do this one this way because the hand holds it. So the claw comes out. So you can see we've got a multi multitude of little holes in there for our pegs to fit in. So we'll go ahead and get that 
in there and setting. so that we can take our arm who comes together like that fits the knuckles around the front rest of the hand on there wham closes in beautifully so we'll get the tiniest bit of glue where those knuckle joints connect to make sure they sit. A little bit in the pegs. Just right on there. We'll do the same thing here. We have to get this arm like this. Holds the sword like that. A little rough, but we'll make it work. those together and let them dry so let's look at how this fits together on our dude that piece will go in like that it sits across his chest which is how we want it to be So we're going to keep an eye on that and figure out where we can put some magnets. We've got a lot of hollow space inside the top here that we're going to be able to make use of. So we have this nice meaty bit here we're going to be able to drill into. And then let's just go ahead and check how the sword arm sits. Hopefully in the same spot. Yep, goes right over that same meaty bit. Fits on right there. So we'll start with our handy drill. Hand drill. We're going to need something large enough to bore a hole for the magnet. Let's see that. We do have our larger magnets, but we also have some smaller ones in here we could try and make use of. Uh, really, these larger ones work out a little better, especially if we can continue to make use of this joint and we can always mix and match magnets to get what we want here. So 
So let's get rid of this. Get our larger hand drill bit in. What did I just drop? I assume a drill. That's okay. We'll use the power of magnets to pick it up. Now this guy is clearly much narrower than the magnet. So we'll have to make multiple boring attempts. But we really just want to empty up some space where we've got a nice hollow bit. So on this one, we have a hollow bit up on the top, on the inside that fits up against that meaty chunk of the arm that we want. And then we have another hollow point up against that meaty chunk in the top of this piece where we'll be able to comfortably nestle a smaller magnet to sit up against our magnet that we install. So we have this meaty bit. So we're going to start by making sure we know exactly where we want it. In here. So we're just going to start with the exacto to mark a little spot. And we'll get to boring. with our hand drill. Sometimes it does help to start the hole with your exacto a little. Be very careful. You just need a tiny little bit poked out so that your drill can get in there and start some purchase. It is just plastic, so your drill is going to really just get in there. See, so we have a nice hollow spot. We're going to make sure we can still, yep, with the arm in place, it's completely covered. So that's going to be a great spot to host a magnet. And we want to make sure that we're a little more open across the inside. So I'm going to use the X-Acto to continue hollowing away. Just continue widening it. We ideally want it to be wide enough to fit that entire magnet inside of it. And while we do want to fit the entire magnet, we want to make sure we can do so while still maintaining Oh, we've already gone a little too far overboard. Lost a little bit of space there. So we just need to make sure the rest of the space we get after is on the inside. Super careful to not shave off any of that. We're almost there. And 
let's make sure we don't leave that inside the model. This tiny little bit across our bottom bit here is all that's left. Famous last words. Okay, we're good enough on the width, we just need to get the inside to match the outside width. Just a little more, same thing. Make sure that inside plastic is cooperating. So there we go. The magnet will sit in there. Uh, we have a okay appearance on the whole. You know, nothing, nothing great, but gonna be alright once we get it primed and the benefits far 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 outweigh the the cost so super glue works a lot differently than plastic glue I use this kind that has uh, it's more of a gel than a liquid and we're just gonna take that peel the excess across the top we're just going to take that, just try and get it right on the inside. And we're immediately going to take our magnet, nestle it in there just how we want it. Don't touch this for too long because unlike plastic glue, it will just stick to you. There we go. Our magnet is glued in with this nice shoulder shape. You can see we're only losing just a little bit of aesthetic across the back there where the magnet peeks out. And it gives us a good idea of where we need to run our counter magnet. Stick straight out. Let's get one of our long magnets here. Keep the drills with the magnets because the magnets pick the drills up when I inevitably scatter them out of the tiny bag. We we'll use a card sleeve for now. Definitely looking forward to the reopening of hobby shops once uh, once we hit the appropriate vaccination levels and everywhere can really start to open back up without fear of 
killing people. Set that to the side. And we'll check out the magnets we do have. We have tiny little infantry magnets, and then these little guys are a little better. We may try two of them sticking straight out. Yep, more drill bits. So we have two sticking straight out. Super glue should already be dry. Polarity is going to be super important here. So we're going to check that out. We're going to see if this will fit. That will fit on straight like that with those magnets in that position. And this is the one I'm worried about. This will fit straight like that with those magnets in that position. Let's see if one more gives us the... Yep, I think one more is precisely what the doctor ordered. Because I can feel some fight with it. fits up in there on that as well so let's just try a little experiment here we're gonna get a little bit of super glue on the end of this magnet we're gonna put the arm straight on and see if we can get the super glue to take and that will put the magnet right where we need it oh Nope, just barely short. So let's see. Oh, I don't think that's going to do it. I think that's just going to glue our magnets to the other magnet. So let's go ahead and pop that off. You can see where it needs to be and where it's touching up against. So let's see if we can get it. To fit right. Oop. So we know where we're going. We're a little short on this one, so we're going to add one tiny magnet. I believe these are the same diameter. Yep. Try a little more. Let's go ahead and smack that on there. Just give it another shot. Work just long enough for the super glue to take, which that feels like it did. Nope. Give it a little longer. Let's try and we can see where it's brushing up in there. So let's go ahead and pop them out. And we're just gonna try and I'm 
manually place them again. Thought I had a tool for this laying around. Let's try an alternate approach then. Big Bob super glue right there. We know from this empty side that <laughs> Good sign for the holding strength. Bad for us right now trying to get it to stick in. So that's right about the angle we want. We're just going to do a little more. Right there. So we'll let that rest, and we'll get started on another one. So we have this guy here. He's going to come in. We kind of luck out here that the uh, bottom line there goes straight up against it. So let's see. How far out three of them stick? About like that. Let's see if, yep, that feels like it fits on there. Seems like a winner to me. So let's go ahead and get these glued together. Get a nice dollop on our end piece. And it fits on just like that, which means that this bit here should be our little Shelf. Same thing, we'll get a little more glue across the bottom. Just let them dry, see, what, see how we do. No. Nope. Clearly I didn't give that enough time. Try a different approach. If it's on like that, this 
so we want like that. Let's get ever slightest bit carved in here for this to fit against. Nope. So we'll put that in the hold pile. We used uh, me using the tiny magnet was one too many. So let's do the same thing here. Figure out our orientation. Glue them together. Get a little glue on the business end. them into that spot we dug. For a toothpick for something like this, but try and get in there and reinforce it a little. Let that rest. Let's see what we got going on here. Feels dried on the outside. Let's see how it sits. Oh no. So our angle is all right. Well, not the greatest. So let's see if we can drop one. This serving to highlight that I am absolutely not uh, not a master of magnetism here. We're just gonna test this out. We still got a lot of glue drying. Let's go ahead and kick some ventilation on to try and expedite our process here. All right, let's try our sword arm again. Nope, popped him right out. We'll just try this technique again here.
there we go so that's the exact angle we want so we're just gonna let the get some more super glue in there and really just give that a good minute to dry. We'll move back over here to this guy. I got the same thing happening. So we're gonna try the same technique. see which which position the glue sets in and we'll pop it off no nope. All right, we're going to try and get this set in there just so we can Let's find our scrap magnet that was just a little longer. just a little bit to lengthen it. it seems I was mistaken concerning the additional length afforded try for a minute and even if we can't get this to stick we're gonna go ahead and move on Ooh, nope that's okay though we got our sword arm in it's the one we're going to use primarily. We can just drop this guy in here. And we'll set that off to the side with the rest of the demons. And that can come later. Get rid of this guy. For now, we're using this. That was a smash success. Go ahead and put his arm on now. I say arm. Put his hand on. A little there. Get a tiny dab at the base of the stave. sits like that. I think he is looking pretty sharp. Set him over here and then once get the lid back on our super glue. Ha ha ha. 
Lord of Change tried to change his position on the desk, but we weren't having it. Plastic from my arm. Get ourselves comfortable. Don't need this page because we, we're not doing just the staff. Whoa. Absolutely thrilled with how that arm came out. So let's pick which head we want. Clearly we want the big long tongue. So let's go ahead and get number 23. Oh, even the tongues are interchangeable. I'll have to take back what I said about the uh, loadout options in the kit. So number 30, I believe, is what we want. Yep, right here. Sadly, it doesn't appear that there are any options for a smaller, uh, smaller face like are available in the Great Unclean One kit. But that's okay. We will persevere. Oops. Then we need his big, long, windy neck, which we know is on the other one. Number 19 and 20. So we have 19 here. Here we will need some wings. So let's go ahead and get those together. So we have number 49 as our first wing. This guy up here. to the other sprue let's go ahead and get both of these while we're here
Real meaty piece, too. Very thick. Alright, let's get our bits trimmed up so we can get the little head assembled. There's our head bits. Let's get the wing done here. Especially some of these chunkier bits. We want those to be smooth because real heavy pieces like this, all the leverage from the weight of the piece sitting on the on that joint will just pop it right out. gash out of that wing. It's okay though. Good flat bits. I have to say, I'm already looking forward to these wings just because they are not ball and socket. And I know that is a point of contention for a lot of people because that means they're uh, closer to a monopose, but just the extra support from the rest of the model is absolutely great so being able to put it on and the model kind of supports itself rather than me having to hold the wing there for an hour all right let's go ahead and get the neck together Get our little face together. Got the spot for the tongue. So those are gonna go like that. And that is the side with the pegs. So we just need to make sure How are we 
fit new ads together. Ah, across the bottom. Which means that this side goes here because there is a peg. Okay, in the workshop, you think of everything. Well, let's get some glue on there. side ah. Ah. okay stop get all the glue off my hands heads together that's gonna fit on the end here that'll fit just like that okay tongue fits directly into this little box here on the end. Go ahead and get these attached. So we are here and here. And this fits in. Oh, how bizarre. Little arrows. Let's see if I can get a good enough shot of this. There are little arrows and everything on me. Uh, wild. Gives a good grip though. All right, I think we're good on the head. That's just gonna fit in right there. So let's get that ready. So that's good to go there. Our wings are assembled, but we need to set them to the side because we need to know what the next page has in store for us. Aha! So we need choice of parts. could not tell you what the difference in these parts is. So let's check the pieces themselves out and see what they look like. So we have 44, 46. And 
angle of the wings, I guess. Who knows? Let's... Let's try the bottom set, I suppose. Ah, yes, the, the angle here looks a little wider than the one here. So I think this guy sits with his wings higher up. Which really is fine. Let's let's go with that. 44. I didn't pick up a greater demon of Zinch to not show off his greater demoniness. 45. We'll keep those there. Then while we're here, we'll go ahead and pick up the other little bits. 56 for sure. Shoulder pads are rad. Remember your ABCs. Always be considering where you can put another shoulder pad. 59. 57 will do because this little knife is cool. Shoulder pad will do. This gives us choice of parts on what we want to put on the side. So let's see if we can find this little scroll. Here we are. We do want our little brimstone horse. These guys are just great. Sort of like the less appreciated nerglings of Zinch. And I think that will finish up our model. So let's get our bits cleaned up. Okay, let's see what we got here. 
So these pieces attach to our wings. So we have I gotta assume Oh no. Let's see, that's our left side wing. Let's see if you attach like that. No. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna get bamboozled by the Okay, so that piece goes on here. I can handle that. So let's glue that on. Dry fit this guy. Solid. change. So let's get this party started. Ooh, yeah. That's really good. That is already leagues beyond what I've come to expect from the the pin style, ball and socket style wings. I'm confident enough in that to let it dry. <laughs> Pretty good scale on this little dude. Great weapons. Again, we have our magnetized sword arm. Pop it right back on. Perfect. Go ahead and get his little shoulder pad on there, cover up that awkward joint. Oops. According to this bit, we're going on like this. Sit up on. Fit 
fits in. There's some little grooves on it that fit it right into the shoulder spines. We'll go with the recommended here. Put this sweet little scroll on his belt. Scroll fits belt like you'd expect. Cut this guy here. He's gonna get pinned on the back of his sash. Let's see where we have a Yeah, that seems right. Or even in between. Yeah, perfect. Oh, we lost our scroll. Ah. Gonna be one of those fights. And last but not least, our little brimstone horse. There we go. Barring anything falling over, dropping off. We have our Lord of Change. Let's get our knife packed up, our glue packed up, sprue cutters packed up. And get all those moved back in to the drawer. Not nearly the level of plastic on this one. Oh. Haha. <laughs> Let's get back to the page we were on. I think this is where the Kairos instructions start. Yep. Great. Good stuff there. Get you a nice shot of the paint instructions on the back. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you had fun. I know I did. See you next time.